Hi, my name is Sam Polly. I'm with Missouri University Extension, and I'm the State Director of Pesticide Safety Education. And I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking to you about personal protective equipment. And that term, the acronym is PPE. What we're talking about is protecting yourself from chemicals. And a lot of people think, oh, well, I don't use conventional pesticides. That's evil. But you probably use some kind of organic pesticides or you use cleaners. And when I'm talking about chemicals, I'm talking about everything from malathion and 2,4-D all the way down to vinegar or homemade remedies for cleaning and disinfecting. Chemicals are just not something you want to be soaking into your skin, even if you think it's a pretty safe chemical. And so I want you to think about that as we go along here and look at PPE. A lot of people ask, well, who cares? I mean, I use stuff that's not that hazardous or I just use a little bit or a small dose. If you look at the typical pesticide label, this is one I just pulled off of a random bottle. It says causes substantial but temporary eye injury. Harmful if swallowed, harmful if absorbed through the skin. And the picture down here really illustrates organic pesticides can cause this kind of reaction. It doesn't have to be a conventional material. Clean household cleaners, some of these products we have in our houses can cause this type of reaction. So we need to be thinking safety and develop a safety culture. The first point I want to make is read the label. The label is the law. It typically has a section that talks about PPE. And this example I took off of a bottle shows the standard baseline equipment, and that's a long sleeve shirt, long pants. That may not be the best option to really protect you, but that's the good standard baseline. You get some mist coming on you. It's going to catch that and keep it off your skin and evaporate. The next thing, not all products require is chemical resistant gloves this one happens to have it but i recommend you wear gloves with any chemical and then of course shoes plus socks i literally have seen countless people using flip-flops or sandals while applying herbicides and that gives you no protection whatsoever but again i would go one up on this i would wear rubber boots every time i spray any kind of chemicals and always wash your ppe separately from the family laundry now let's take a minute to go through some examples. These are standard chemical resistant gloves. These are your lower end, cheaper disposable gloves, but they work. And then these gloves over here, your neoprene and your nitrile, they're longer, so they cover your more of your arm and they're a little tougher. Here's some eye protection. You have your full face respirator, you have goggles and safety glasses. You could also use a face shield. Here's my guy all decked out and suited up. And he's even got a Tyvek suit over everything else. And one free point I want to give you today, here's duct tape sealing that glove onto that sleeve so you have no chemical entry possibility. So now let's take a look at some faulty PPE. Here are dish gloves. Latex dish glove are not adequate. They can't hold up to the chemistry of many products. So you don't want to wear those. These are chemical resistant gloves, but look at that white liner on the inside. You drizzle a little bit of chemical down your sleeve, and now it's soaked into that cloth, held against your skin like a nicotine patch, and you're just soaking that chemical up. Here's safety glasses with no brow protection, no side protection. And then your dust masks made popular by the pandemic that basically do nothing. There's no seal. They're not engineered to keep anything out of your lungs or stomach. So time for a little pop quiz to see if you learned anything here. And what's wrong with this picture? And you spotted it right off the bat. He has no sleeves. These are short sleeve shirt. A lot of exposed flesh there. No gloves. There's a second violation. And one other thing you might not have noticed, look how high that spray boom is. I actually observed this so high that the spray was coming back and going all over his legs, soaking into his pants and his shoes. So to summarize, cover up. It's that simple. Don't have exposed arms and legs. Wear some long sleeve clothes and preferably even some coveralls. Wear gloves every time you use chemicals. Protect your eyes. I can't tell you how many times I've had hoses explode, the wind switch and threw chemicals on me. I'm glad I had the eyewear. Think waterproof. Shoes plus socks are legally adequate, but they're going to soak up chemical. Just wear some rubber boots 
And finally, read the label. That's where you always start. Read the label. Hope you learned something and gave you some food for thought. And thanks for being with us today.